Let me show you how to linearize, to make a linearized graph. Okay, so really all we need are the, the, the time and the position here. So select those, right? Copy it. And then let's add a new tab here. So I'm going to click Add a Sheet. I want that sheet over here. I don't know why. Uh, let's rename this uh, something. Lion Eye. Wow, I like that. I just typed Lion. Linearization. All right. And then uh, I'm going to paste my data in there. Now, what I want is a, a, a column that is the time squared in between these two. So let's move the position over. So select the position. Then go to the edge of it, and it gives you a hand. Move it over one. And then this column is going to be time. That's going to be seconds to the two, right? All right. And then once you hit enter, watch this. If you go up to that little divider and you get the little move it, double click that and it makes it as big as whatever the biggest thing is in that column. Okay, so we've got time squared. Now we're going to fill it with values. So equals, to type the equals. And then you're going to click on this cell here. Or you could just type A2, right? These are all just addresses, right? And then we're going to square it. So caret 2, right? And then it suggests an autofill. You can just go with that if it does, right? Or if it doesn't do that, you can do the same thing. Click in the old cell, cell you just created. And then notice I could move it. I can select. But if you go to the lower right, the cursor changes to the fill down or generalize. And that's what we want. It does that, right? So now we've got time squared versus position. Let's graph that. So let's insert a chart. And if your chart is not a scatter graph, mine defaults to scatter graph. But if it's not, scroll down here. This doesn't look like the right graph, but it's the right one. Okay. They would do us a great service if they would make it look more like a normal graph. Okay, so there it is. Uh, we want to basically put a trend line on that. So uh, in the three dots, you're going to go edit chart, right? There it is, right? If, there, if that's not there. And then there's two tabs at the top. Go to customize. And we don't really care about the labels and stuff on this. We just need the uh, trend line on this. So in here, click series, right? And scroll down and you'll see there's an option for a trend line. The first thing it does is it'll, it'll default to a linear trend line. And that's what we want. But we want to show the equation. So see where it says label? Use the equation. I would think they'd have a little button that says, you know, show the equation, because we do that so often. Now, notice that our, our um, the, the thing multiplied by x, and by the way, x in this case is t squared, right? Remember, we, we the, the x-axis here is really t squared. So what this means is that it's 0 0.0351 t squared. Well, that 0 0.0351 is half of a. This means that this thing thinks a is 0 0.0702. I'll show you that in a second here. Okay, but we want to put this in our document. So go up here. I think you can just copy, but you know you can also do this. So go to the three dots, copy chart. Go to your document and select these words, delete them, and then paste. I, you know, I'm going to choose unlinked. Linked gets complicated, but you know, if you don't have any problem with that, that's fine. So there it is, right? Uh, do they look linear? I think that looks linear. You know, you could talk about it. Except for down here. Notice that that looks a bit curved. And I don't know why that is. Uh, I'm not smart enough to know that. Um, but I think my hypothesis is that it might be a result of the fact that Maybe we didn't start with it moving. Um, so it looks, you know, the main body of this has a definite non-zero intercept, right? It looks like it would be a positive y-intercept. All right, um, is it, what is the acceleration you calculate from the slope? Okay, well, um, we know that one-half a equals 0 0.0351, right? Because remember that that um, this is really t squared. x is really t squared, right? Okay? Um, and so that's what it is. I just took that coefficient there, right? So a would be um, 
0 0.0702. Uh, Is that right? Let me just double check that. It's always sad to put something in and you think you're right, but you're not right. And this is actually uh, meters per second per second. Now, why is it meters per second per second? Well, it's the slope of this graph, right? The slope is rise over run. The run is in time squared, which would be seconds squared. So it would be meters would be the rise divided by seconds squared, which is what that is, right? Meters per second per second is the same as meters per second squared, okay? So compare that to the slope. Uh, so just say what they are um, with the, with the velocity graph, I got uh, 0.0683, uh, which is darn. You can use some colorful language here. Darn close to uh, 0 0.0702. How far away is it? You could figure out a percent. If you want to be all scientific, you can say, well, it's within 5%. Okay, that's fine. Um, did we do everything we're supposed to do? Yeah, I think so. Right. Does it look linear? We answered all those questions. Okay, so that's step 14. Good enough.